This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning and thank you for waking up with us on this Sunday. I'm Galen Utland. The time now is six o'clock and this weekend as gun violence rises in the area, police are forming new partnerships to end it. We'll share what they're doing to push toward peace. And after the new CDC guidance, do you know when to wear your mask? The places you'll still need one through all of the mixed messages. But first, our Keely Chalmers joins us live at home with the forecast coming off another amazing day yesterday. Yeah, it was gorgeous. Made it up to 81 degrees. We are going to be uh, up to 81 degrees again today, if not warmer in some areas. So expect a day full of sunshine. Beautiful clear skies sunshine out there right now we're at 52 degrees the winds are calm here is how your sunday is shaping up we'll uh, be all up to 74 degrees by noon so warming up nicely clear skies sunny and even warmer 82 by five o'clock this is the day of the 80s tomorrow we start a cool down but the good news we're actually going to get some much needed rain and the uh, extended forecast we'll talk more about that coming up just a bit. Yeah. All right, we'll see you in a few minutes. Keely, thank you so much. Well, gun violence is rising in Portland and now police and non law enforcement groups are working together to stop it. They want to have a visible presence to discourage violence and our Christelle Kumwe explains those new collaborations. Shootings are happening at a record pace in Portland. The latest happened near Ventura Park early Saturday morning. One person was hurt and is recovering and a woman died Friday after she was shot Wednesday night in Northeast Portland. It makes me sad. It breaks my heart. And I also feel ashamed because I know it's a ripple effect for some of my actions. Lionel Irving calls himself a gang veteran. He started an outreach group called Love is Stronger to help young men caught up in criminal activity find a way out. Who can be in the right state of mind right now with what's going on inside our community? And these are our kids. In Portland this year, there have been 31 homicides, 23 of which were shootings. At this point last year, there were four homicides. In 2019, there were three. There's a, a cycle of violence here that we're trying to break. To do There's that, a, Portland Police you know, Chief Chuck Lavelle says nature. PPB teamed up with several law enforcement agencies, including the Portland FBI, for a special effort this weekend. Uh, we'll be out, out providing a high visibility presence and a deterrent to those who would come here and commit crimes. What we saw earlier in this week where it wasn't just one or two or three or four shootings, but even more, we can't have. Kieran Ramsey this with Portland FBI seen, joined Lavelle you know, on a briefing area. Saturday. So we are now in a crisis mode where we are trying to call upon all of our partners. All of us in law enforcement certainly agree partnership has to be the way that we address this. Lavelle says several vigils and funerals planned this weekend are credible targets for potential gun violence. This concerns comes after seven people were shot at a vigil last month for a shooting victim. There's um, you know, retaliation and things of that nature that we're really concerned about. The task force will specifically respond to scenes this weekend to help identify shooters, victims and witnesses. That's the short term solution. Lovell admits the bureau is lean. They've had to switch resources around back and forth to address the violence. If the gun violence continues at this um, rate, we're going to have to look really hard at what ways we're going to um, we're going to address it as far as if it's more resources, more officers, uh, more partnerships or things of that nature. For Irving, community accountability is what's lacking. We know our kids hanging out with gang, with gang members. When are we going to say something? We have direct responsibility, and the police is not going to stop. I don't care if they got a task force. I don't mean nothing because there's too many different groups involved. Irving wants to partner with city leaders. He says his experience can serve as a solution to curb the violence in the city. It ain't. It's all. It's a holistic approach. But if we ain't get to the table. How are we gonna give our opinion? I was in prison, so I know what needs to happen when these kids go to prison. Christelle Kumwe, so KGW right here, News. Well, Hillsborough Fire and Rescue says at least 26 people got sick after a toxic exposure at a Sherry's restaurant. Seven of them had to go to the hospital, but they are expected to be okay. Crews were called just after 9 Saturday morning after people started coughing, getting dizzy, and felt a burning sensation. A special hazardous materials team went in after people evacuated. Turns out they think the HVAC system was the problem. Hillsborough Fire does not think a crime was involved, and they also did not find anything strange on the roof. They're working with the manufacturer to figure out exactly what happened. 
The fighting between Israel and Palestine is intensifying, and this morning, Israeli airstrikes on Gaza City flattened three buildings and killed at least 26 people. That's the deadliest single attack since fighting broke out nearly a week ago. Earlier this morning, the Israeli military said it destroyed the home of Gaza's top Hamas leader. This was the third such attack in the last two days on the homes of a senior Hamas leader. Israel has stepped up strikes in recent days to inflict as much damage as possible on Hamas as international mediators push for a ceasefire. A U.S. diplomat is in the region to try de-escalating tensions, and the U.N. Security Council is set to meet today. Meanwhile, thousands of people across our country protested for Palestinian rights this weekend, and in Portland they rallied at Terry Shrunk Plaza. The conflict between Palestine and Israel is long and complicated, with some believing Israel was only created after forcing Palestinians out. The Palestinians are systemically, systematically silenced on every single platform. They're silenced in academia, they're silenced on the political stage. They have no ability to be an actual narrative. The Palestinian story is one that's dehumanized. The point of having Palestinians speak so that their truth is seen and heard, so that they are seen for their, their humanity and not just numbers, uh, uh, and, and, when, and, and otherwise they're, when they have no opportunity to actually have any sort of platform or uh, uh, visibility. Now the fighting between the two sides goes back a century. The UN voted for Palestine to be split into separate Jewish and Arab states back in 1947. The plan was accepted by Jewish leaders, but rejected by the Arab side. All right, turning now to the pandemic. Although the CDC says people who are vaccinated don't have to wear masks anymore, the mask mandate in Oregon is still technically in effect. We've heard some mixed messaging from the governor and other leaders about when you can ditch your mask. And we're still waiting for clarity. It's the bridge many have waited for us to cross in the COVID pandemic. No more masks. The CDC says nationally, people who are vaccinated against the virus don't need one in most indoor or outdoor settings. Now it's up to states to make the next move. Oregonians now have a choice, either get vaccinated or continue wearing a mask. Governor Kate Brown says Oregon will follow the new CDC guidance, but the Oregon Health Authority is still working to update its rules. 211 told KGW Saturday it doesn't know when the mandate will change. So that leaves this choice. Some businesses may prefer to simply continue operating under the current guidance for now. Big stores like Costco, Walmart, and Trader Joe's put out statements that vaccinated customers are welcome to take off masks inside. But in Oregon, that mandate is still in place until an update comes out. OHJ said that could eventually mean asking for proof. We'll have to have a system in place um, for asking about vaccine status. It's been a lot of kind of back and forth. For everyday people like Ethan Bliss, not always able to catch every news conference, keeping up with these changing guidances and resulting gray areas is tough. It's kind of been a struggle throughout this whole quarantine time. And so the public then comes to the business looking for answers. And unfortunately, we don't have them. Landon Burningham owns Physique Fitness in the Salem area. He wishes Oregon had a guidance ready before announcing it would follow the CDC. You know, everyone gets really excited and they want those things to happen effective immediately. And then we look like the bad guy. We look like we're not adopting this new, potentially wonderful rule. What do you want to change? I think the biggest thing is we just need clarity. He and many others also say businesses asking for vaccination status isn't realistic. Because how are you going to ask everybody for proof? Uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm taking my mask off. In Washington, it's a little clearer. Governor Jay Inslee said effective immediately, fully vaccinated people can go maskless and gather in most indoor and outdoor settings. I mean, that's the incentive here is to get vaccinated. Jackie Wood lives in Washington and said her state's guidance makes sense. Get vaccinated <laughs> now while it's free and available. Overall, cities and businesses can maintain mask requirements. Most grocery chains in the Portland metro told KGW they plan to keep masking rules for now. Well, new rules didn't come in time to save one popular event this year. For the second straight year, the Clark County Fair is not going to happen. So coming up, why leaders say the decision is the right one, even if they're disappointed.